Johnny Ken Show, John Cobell and Ken Champo. All right, if you're just joining us, today we had an extended interview with our anonymous informant. We've disguised his voice. He's got connections to the Fullerton Police Department. And uh, we're going to be playing excerpts now for the rest of the hour. Each segment has fascinating material in it based on his knowledge of what's going on inside the Fullerton PD in regards to the Kelly Thomas beating. So let's roll the tape for segment number one. What else do you know? I, I understand you have contact with some Fullerton police officers. Uh, I have some contacts within the police department. Yeah, quite a few. And, and um, yeah, go ahead. And no, and and obviously, uh, I'm sure many of them are very upset by all that's gone on. They, they, the majority of the Fullerton police officers are uh, very upset and uh, are having a hell of a job trying to do their job from day to day with people screaming and yelling at them because nobody knows who those officers were so you're not sure who's pulling up on you when when you have contact with them does everybody in the fullerton pd know who the six are i would say without a doubt most but i would say the majority of the fullerton police department knows who the six are if not everybody now from what i understand and I want this to be in your words. Uh-huh. The, the officers who committed the act against Kelly Thomas, uh-huh. they were allowed to see the video from that city camera? Um, th- th- this is allegedly what happened. Uh, I, I believe it to be true, but I'll have to say allegedly for now. Uh, they were shown the video while they were writing their report on the incident so that they could kind of recount what happened and, and put it on paper. Was was is this a routine procedure? Do you know? I don't, well from 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 when you spoke with the district attorney's lady on Friday, I wouldn't believe that it would be a routine procedure. Procedure they don't want the witnesses seeing the video before they get recorded testimony. Why would you allow a police officer to see the video while he's writing the report? Shouldn't the report come from the initial contact with the suspect? Well, you put everything down the way you believe it happened, and the video comes later. Yeah, I mean, I, that, that would seem to, that would seem to make sense. As you generally, I thought police officers write down what they just experienced, and it's then correct. and and then you know, then you find out if they're if they're telling the truth. Correct. But in, but in this balance. case, didn't wouldn't they know that this videotape is ex- extremely damning? And and could end up putting them all in prison. Uh, I would think so. Uh, not, not only that, but I, I can also tell you that that night there were three dispatchers on duty in that office, and and all three dispatchers, one one male and two females, uh, observed that video as it was taking place. And did they take any action? Did they call for other cops to get the, the I, new I, cops I to stop the old? Were, I believe they were just in shock while it was going on, while it was happening. Well, From what I've heard, they were probably just in shock. Does anyone call the police chief, Mike Sellers, and say, you won't believe what just happened. You've got to come and see this. And and immediately do something with those cops? Immediately suspend them? I, I would think you would, because that video feed that those three dispatchers were watching is also played in the watch commander's office where there is a lieutenant on duty. Do we know if he saw the video as it was happening? I believe I believe he did, but I can't say for sure. I know the video is played as it's played in the dispatcher's office on the TV in the lieutenant, the watch commander's office. How can we... It's a live feed. Do you have any idea how we could get the names of the officers involved? Um, yes. Yeah. I, I believe we could. I mean, is there any I, way... I believe we could. Is there any way you could get it for us? Uh, it's very possible. Be, yeah. Be, I, I can tell you a lot about one of the officers. That is the main officer that you see in the video. Right. Um, tell me what you know. And I, I and, and, to, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to clear one thing up. Uh, uh, Friday, towards the end of the show, they they did release one officer's name that people believed was the was the officer. I, I believe people believe that he is the one that was whacking uh, the young man in the head with a taser 
uh, Hampton, Officer Hampton. It was not Officer Hampton. I, I can tell you that with 100% certainty. Right. That was on the Fullerton's Future. Dot Correct. org blog. It was not. And then we read, and then we read the attorney's yeah. statement uh, threatening them with a uh, with a libel suit over. Us. Right. Okay, so you're saying he was not part of the six. Hampton. He, he was there on scene. He showed up later on when the suspect was on the ground, and Hampton actually is one of the officers that got on him and tried to handcuff him, but had to get off because the officer that was beating him in the head, the blood was going over Hampton, so he had to back off the suspect because he saw the blood coming onto him. Oh, so so when the when the most violent of the officers was smashing Hampton's head with the butt of that taser gun. Well, Thomas's not, not head, Thomas's head. Thomas's head. Th- Thomas's head, excuse me, yeah. Yes. All right, so he's slamming Thomas's head with the butt of a taser gun, and that's when Hampton tried to come in and handcuff? And he then tried the... to handcuff him to, to stop the situation, but the blood started spurting on him, and he, he had to get off. Did anyone try to... Because rest- the officer repeatedly was whacking him in the head with the taser. All right, let, let, did anyone try to restrain that officer in any way? Uh... I don't believe so. He's a big guy. Very big. Okay. Can, um, can you hold on? Can you hold on for a moment? Sure. All right. When All we right. come back, All right, let's let's stop here. We're back live. All right. Next segment, right after Terry Ray's news, we're going to talk to the uh, anonymous informant further, specifically about the officer who is smashing Kelly Thomas's head with the butt end of that taser, and they did the uh, knee drop smashing the knee into his nose and throat. This guy has a unique history as a police officer, as you'll find out in the next segment. And In fact, it's hard to believe if what our informant is saying, if what our informant is saying is true, it's it, it's got to be the guy, Same guy whose name I'm looking at in these news stories from 1998. And it's it's a, a, a LAPD officer who was on duty for about three weeks, and he got shot six times and lost lost an eye. Ended up getting a pension settlement from LAPD, and then he went on to Fullerton. Now there's a lot of people spreading his name out on Twitter, and a lot of people posting his phone number and his address. I don't think anybody needs to take any action against this man. We're going to get the Orange County District Attorney to do the right thing. And so there's no need to uh, do any vigilante justice here. Uh, That's why we're, at the moment, since I don't have absolute proof, we have an anonymous informant. We know the guy's name. But he's relying on other informants inside the Fullerton PD Hmm. as to who this guy is. So we're getting this story in a second hand here. But it, it... there can only be one person with this background. But we haven't seen the videotape yet either. And in any event, you'll hear the conversation with our anonymous informant next as he talks about the officer who it seems did the most damage to Kelly Thomas in Fullerton. All right, so that's coming up next. John and Ken Show, John Cobalt and Ken Shampoo. Well, with uh, the cover-up going on in the Fullerton Police Department... And uh, a decided lack of media coverage. We're going to continue presenting the interview with our anonymous informant with ties to the Fullerton PD as we try to hone in on who exactly administered that terrible, deadly beating to Kelly Thomas on the night of July 5th. Now, we did this interview earlier, and we pick it up uh, as we try to get a, a handle on who the main culprit was who did the beating with the butt end of the taser gun and did that uh, drop knee move on Kelly Thomas's nose and throat. So let's continue. And again, we have uh, altered our informant's voice. Roll. Let's focus in on the officer that you said in a previous conversation had um, hit Kelly in the back of the head repeatedly with the butt of a taser gun. Was he also the same one who uh, did that drop knee technique where he slammed his knee into Kelly's nose and throat? Yeah, that's correct. All right. What, what's his story? What What do we know about him? This officer, uh, 
is actually a retired LAPD cop. Uh, back some years, uh, I believe the year was 1997, he had uh, only been out of the academy a few weeks and was actually shot on duty. He was actually shot in the eye. Uh, and LAPD refused to put him back on duty on the street, so the city voted to give him a retirement, and uh, he ultimately got hired on with Fullerton Police Department. And he lost the eye in that shooting? That's correct. And Fullerton was, was willing to take him even though he had one eye? That's correct. And what did he have in the other eye socket, a glass eye? He has a glass eye. Well... There can't be too many police officers in Fullerton with, with a glass eye. I wouldn't think so. And you're sure this is the officer who did all that damage? That's the officer. And you know this from your contacts? That's correct. Is he the guy, one of the six was immediately placed on administrative leave? That is not him. That is not him? No, this... This officer, believe it or not, uh, Friday night after that letter came out that they had reassigned all the officers off the streets, is now assigned to the gang unit. The gang in unit? In plain clothes. In plain clothes. I thought he was being taken off the street. He's off the street. I'm, I'm, I can't speak for sure that he went out on the street that night, but he was reassigned to plain clothes duty to the gang unit. But so he's not working in an office. Uh, he was he, he was walking around the station that night. I can tell you that in plain clothes and had been reassigned. I can't say for sure that he went out on duty. Okay, so just just to recap here, we're talking about a guy who is who was LAPD officer. After three weeks, he gets shot, loses an eye. LAPD lets him go, gives him a settlement. He goes on to work at Fullerton. He's the guy who is smashing Kelly Thomas in the back of the head with the butt end of the taser gun. That's correct. And doing the drop knee smash correct. into the nose and throat. And now correct. he's not on he was not on administrative leave, but he was reassigned to a gang unit in plain clothes. Correct. And it's, I'm gonna drop another bombshell on you right here. Go. Uh, Shortly after the beating, and I, I, I can't say for sure it was the same night or the next night he was on duty, um, that officer was overheard by other officers in the locker room bragging about how he had beat the crap out of that guy so good. Bragging? Bragging. Openly in the locker room. Oh, dear. Did he say why he beat Kelly Thomas so badly? What was the provocation? I, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. I would think the guy's big enough on his own, he probably could have laid on him and kept him on the ground. How are the other? How did the other officers react to this bragging, do we know? They're, they're not happy. They, they can't. Uh, I can tell you that previously, before this ever happened, some officers uh, haven't liked his heavy-handed tactics on the job. And don't condone what he does. But this is a murder. This is way beyond just random police uh, abuse. I would say this is getting bad, yeah. What else do you know? Anything else? I, I can speak to you a little more about the uh, that video camera. Uh, you want to talk about a good video system. That, that camera, actually, when it zooms in, it has daytime and nighttime capabilities and can pretty much count freckles on somebody's chest if you zoom it in close enough. And one of the dispatchers zoomed it in? Yeah. So it's real clear who did what? It's real clear. And I would guess that that's why the district attorney's office isn't releasing the video. It doesn't seem like there's any way you can't charge these cops. If you what, wouldn't think so. If, all, if what you're saying turns out to be true. Yeah. Well, I know people who've viewed that video on those screens, and, and they know how clear it is. So have you heard why they were protected for three weeks and, and, and still uh, allowed to go on the street? It's a, it's, I believe it's an ongoing, long-going problem with the Fullerton Police Department, with, with 
cover up with giving lots of leeway to do what you have to do uh, to do your job. Have there been a lot of beatings in Fullerton? I don't, I don't specifically know about a lot of beatings. I know there's been other instances where things are, are swept under the rug, are covered up. Well, what about the uh, police chief here? I'm I'm not really sure. I, you would think a guy like that would probably be at work 18 hours a day right now trying to figure out what to do. But I mean, why why was he willing to look the other way? It's one thing to have you know other Yahoo cops in the locker room look the other way, but why the police chief? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I I believe he's he's kind of letting the lieutenants and captains figure it out at this point. This is Mike Sellers we're talking about. He's the police chief, correct. Does Mike Sellers understand what's going on? I mean, I mean, now everyone's covering this story at length. Does he understand? Yeah, I, th- I think I think because of the lag time in not not being reported, everybody thought they were clear. Uh, if you know what I mean. But and when when Sellers when when Kelly Thomas's dad came out, that that kind of started the ball rolling, and people started getting scared. But when Mike Sellers saw the video of what this cop did to Kelly Thomas and, and all the rest of them, that didn't sicken him enough to immediately turn these cops in himself? I, I, I would have thought he would have driven over to the DA's office himself with the video and said, charge these guys. You would think so. All right. You would think so. We've got to go. We've got to do the news. If you have anything else, let us know, all right? Uh, I've, I've got more. <laughs> you got more right now? Oh, sure. All right. Well, we'll hold on the line, all right? Okay, back live here. Uh, That's an interview we did earlier with our anonymous police informant, his uh, voice disguised. And it it is stunning what he's revealing, that everybody in the police department knows who the six are, that Mike Sellers should have known that night after seeing the video. The video was live on, on video screens inside police headquarters. And yet for three weeks... These cops were allowed to walk the streets as if nothing happened. It's shocking, the culture of this police department. And and, and the officers are upset that, that people are shouting at them and calling them names? Their morale is down? Seriously? Kelly Thomas suffered just one of the worst, deadliest beatings imaginable. And you guys are worried about your morale. And on top of that, they hired a lawyer to insult Kelly Thomas to his dad's face. Bruce Pryette said to Kelly Thomas's dad, Ron, Ron, your son wasn't a rocket scientist. I don't know how people live with themselves. We got, we got another segment to play of this interview. And we'll talk more about it in the 6 o'clock hour. In the 6 o'clock hour, we're also going to play you the audio of the video from the bus outside of this uh, beating site, Orange County Transportation Authority bus, you'll hear passengers boarding the bus talking excitedly, breathlessly, about what they just witnessed. They saw the beating. So that's all ahead. John and Ken, KFI AM 640. We're stimulating talk radio. KFI News covers Orange County. Cops say he's the suspected driver of the Camry. In Huntington Beach, Steve Gregory, KFI News. A woman in Laguna Woods was walking her dog when a coyote snatched it up and ran off. John and Ken Show, John Cobell and Ken Champo. All right, the final part of the interview we did with our anonymous informant who has ties to the Fullerton Police Department. It's about the Kelly Thomas murder that those six officers participated in. And we had this interview about two hours ago. We've been replaying it. And so far, nobody's called us to say, your guy has the wrong information. And the last segment, we focused on one of the uh, main combatants, a police officer who used the butt end of a taser gun to split Kelly Thomas's head open and then used his knee to smash his face and throat. And that officer has an interesting background, lost an eye in a shooting when he was an LAPD officer back in 1996, less than three weeks after he graduated from the police academy. I've got two news stories in front of me about this guy. I'll read them to you coming up after the 6 o'clock news. 
Uh, let's, when we ended the, I thought we were going to end the interview a couple of hours ago and then he said, no, I've got more. He kept saying that. He kept saying that. So we held him for a third segment. We're going to play that third segment now. Roll. What else do you know that's worth telling? <laughs> um, well, I can tell you that Fullerton PD is, is what's called a paperless department. Uh, so everything's on computer, done by computer. So after those reports were written and allegedly kicked back down to be rewritten and rewritten and rewritten. Every time one of those computers was logged on to change something, it's been logged. So, Are you saying they kept rewriting the report? That's correct. To do what? Um, allegedly, the higher-ups didn't like the way the report was written and sent them back to be rewritten in a in a in a different way to, what, to, to, to clean up some of the violence uh to clean up some things they didn't like do we know what was in the report if there was anything in the report that indicated why Kel kelly thomas was was seized upon like what he uh, I, did originally to set off these cops the the only the only thing that that has been relayed to me is, is that he was matched to the description of somebody who was breaking into the cars, obviously, and that he ran from them when they tried to do a simple search on him. That he ran away? That he ran away, correct. Okay. And two officers were able to tackle him and take him down, and that's when it began. So so the reports are rewritten and rewritten, and you're saying that there would, there would be a record of all these rewrites somewhere in the Philippines? That's correct. Because every time you log on to the Fullerton computer and then you hit save, it goes to the main computer where next time you change it, it, it it's different. But it, it logs in. every. You have to log in every time. Okay, so there'd be a record of all the logins by all the cops as they kept rewriting the reports. That's correct. All right, what else do you know? Um, the, the tasers, I, I know quite a few people have said they tased them five times six times, whatever it may be. I don't know. I can tell you a little bit about their ta those tasers in general. Um, but those tasers actually have a plug-in mechanism that back at the police department, they can actually tell how many times you pulled the trigger to tase somebody. It's like a diagnostic reading on a car, how you would plug it in. Yeah. So in actuality, each officer, if there was five that were deployed, they could have each tased him twice. That would have been ten tasings. So there's a record of that. What you're explaining here is there's a lot of easily available evidence. That, that's correct. Do we know if the Orange County DA investigators have been in the Fullerton PD headquarters to collect all this? I can't tell you that. I, I, I believe that before they would get there, the feds are probably going to come in and take everything. <laughs> yeah, because there's an FBI investigation. Right. And, and, and maybe a civil rights investigation from the Department of Justice. Correct. All right. Anything else? Uh, let me stitch through some other stuff and uh, uh, see, see what I can come up with for you. Okay. I do have one question, if I may. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. is Steve Gregory here. Um, is it your understanding that the call that night was about uh, a particular individual uh, with no name, or was it your understanding when the call came in that they identified Kelly Thomas specifically? No, my understanding is that it was a blank call from somebody that had come out um, uh, somewhere in the area and had seen somebody looking into cars. Did the call come, do you I, know where the call came from, originated from a business or from a, an individual? I believe it came from an individual. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah. All right, listen, uh, anonymous informant, thank you for coming on. And no uh, at any point, if you've got any more relevant information, we'll put you on, all right? Okay. All right, thanks very much. He's the only guy we're back live. Only guy we can get any uh, real information from. We're going to talk about um, specifically the news stories from uh, 1998 that discuss this particular police officer that our informant said did a lot of the beating in his history. The XLAPD cop. XLAPD cop. He was a cop for three weeks, shot six times, lost an eye. LAPD did not want him back, engineered a settlement, and then he went on to the Fullerton PD. Got it. He's got a glass eye. And uh, you know we've played that interview two hours ago, and we don't have anybody in law enforcement or the DA's office calling up and saying, no, no, no. You're wrong, John. You're wrong. 
So we'll we'll read to you. We'll, we'll talk about why I don't want to give out his name yet, and we'll read to you the two stories from the L.A. Times from 1998. Terry Elmer has the news now. John and Ken, KFI, AM640, more stimulating talk radio.